What's up guys, Jay's Two Cents here, and there's been quite the discussion taking place on Twitter and in the comments section on my 1070 video regarding open air test benches like this guy right here. Oh, jeez, he doesn't really know how heavy this thing is. Versus real world testing in a case like you see behind me on graphics cards and whether or not it makes a difference. It's quite the split decision with, I'd say about half the community saying the case is not the best way to do the testing because there's too many variables. And then my position of allowing the open air test bench to be the best way to do the testing because then the only thing limiting the temperatures of the card is the cooler itself, which is the only way to do a complete cooler test. So what we're gonna do today, we're gonna do a single graphics card. We're gonna use my MSI Gaming X 8G, a 1080 card. We're gonna put it in the test bench. Then we're gonna put it in the S340 case here with uh, two intake fans, two exhausts, and a front-mounted radiator and see whether or not uh, the temperatures go up in a closed case. This ought to be good. The new Z170 classified motherboard from EVGA features eight-phase PWM, four-way SLI support, along with top-notch components to offer gamers and enthusiasts more of what they want. A badass motherboard with no compromises. Click the link below to learn more. Now before we get into today's test video, you guys have to be aware of two different types of coolers on the market. You've got the reference style cooler with both, which both AMD and Nvidia use, where it's got a turbine here that's gonna pull air in and push it out, and it's not gonna rely on the case whatsoever to exhaust any of the heat. It just relies on the case supplying air to the card so that it has air to basically suck through right here and blow. It, it sucks and it blows. And on the flip side, you've got a card like this with multiple fans. Pretty much all the board partners come out with their custom coolers like this, which takes the air, it swirls it around in the heat sink, it sends it off into the atmosphere, or in the case in this instance here, where the case is then responsible for taking the heat and sending it out into the room. So the argument has been, and I'm gonna leave reference cards out of this. Reference cards are best case scenario when it comes to case testing. Again, as I said, it doesn't rely on the case to exhaust the heat. But when it comes to a card like this, are you actually, my computer just went to sleep, I swear it didn't die. So the argument in the community recently has been whether or not GPU testers like myself who do testing in an open air test bench are doing the community a disservice by not showing what temperatures would be like inside of a case. So what we're gonna do today is we are gonna take my MSI Gaming X 8G, which is a 1080 card, we're gonna put it in the open air test bench, go through 20 minutes of looping heaven benchmark with settings max, and then we are going to uh, look at the numbers, see what happened with GPU boost, did it thermal throttle, what happened to the temps, what was the fan percentage on uh, speed, and then we're gonna take it, put it in the S340 case here, which has a front-mounted radiator, an H100i, two intake fans, and then it's got two exhaust fans. And we are gonna see, with what I consider to be one of the worst case scenarios here, with a front-mounted radiator uh, and a closed mid-tower case, whether or not the temperatures go up or they stay the same or they go down in a case like this. Some arguments have actually been that cases can increase the efficiency of cooling on a graphics card and bring the temperatures down. So I guess we're gonna find out whether or not that is the case. I say the case, but I mean the situation. You, you get what I mean. Transition. This loop has been running now for exactly 20 minutes and I wanna show you what you're seeing here. It's kind of hard to see because of the, you know, the gray buttons behind there, but we'll look from left to right the graphics card is currently running at 72C in the open test bench with fans blowing directly on the card even, I wanna point that out. 98% uh, load on the GPU, that's gonna bounce between 98 and 99. 57% fan speed, 1835 megahertz core clock. That's kind of a sneak peek for you guys that are waiting for this MSI review. I promise it's coming soon. And you'll see why it was taking so long when I do the review. And the core voltage is running at a constant 1.062 volts. So I'm gonna go ahead and, whoops, wrong one. I'm gonna go ahead and exit the test right here and we'll take a look at the chart. And we're gonna do this all in one clean cut here because I don't want anyone being like, oh, there's Jay being all kinds of shenanigans and stuff. No, no shenanigans here. So here is that test run right here for 20 minutes. Now let's go ahead and start at, start at the, uh, the top right here. The GPU temperature, minimum of 43, doesn't really matter because that card idles without the fans on. But the GPU temperature here sat, as you can see, as we go across the chart here, 71, 72, 73, 71, 72, 71, 72, 71, 72, 71, 69, 71, 72, 71. So you can see it is between 70 and 72. In fact, I'm gonna say between 71 and 72. We saw 71 and 69 once in the middle of the test. Uh, fan speed, 
Highest it went to was 57% uh, fan speed. So you can see right there, 56, 57, it's pretty constant. And then our core clock, as you can see again, a constant 1835, just all the way across the test. It started out at 1873 and then 1860 and then 1835, and that is where it stayed. And then um, voltage, as you can see right here, was pretty much a constant, 162. 150 and then 162 the entire rest of the test once temperatures and everything equalized. So there you go, there's our baseline test here with the open air test bench. We're gonna go ahead and take the exact same graphics card, all factory settings, not touching a damn thing, and we are going to stick it inside of the NZXT Razor case that I've got, which has two 120 millimeter intake fans and two 120 millimeter exhaust fans with a front mounted radiator on a Corsair H100i. So I already showed you guys that's the test rig. We're gonna put it in there and we're gonna see exactly what happens. I don't know, uh, maybe it's gonna be worse. Maybe it's gonna be better. That's the whole point of this video. So let's find out. Transition. So the S340 is set up over there, as you can see. And the first thing I want to show is actually how our idle temps are lower in the case than they were in the open air test bench. Because remember, the MSI cards and the uh, Twin Frozer 6 do not turn until the graphics card gets up to 66 degrees Celsius. So the fans are off right now. And you can see we're idling at 39, where we were idling at 46 in the open air test bench. Obviously that's because the case is supplying some extra cooling to the graphics card, which is actually one of the arguments some people have. Cases might actually help your graphics card perform better and better temperatures than open air test benches. But anyway, as you can see right now, we've got all the settings are basically stock right now for the graphics card. One thing to bear in mind is the test bench is an X99 system, and this is a Z170 6700K system. I don't anticipate there being any difference. It's the exact same driver, exact same version of MSI Afterburner, so I don't think anything's gonna change. Um, you can see here the factory core uh, voltage curve. Everything is exactly as it ships, so I don't think there's gonna be anything different, but I just wanted to point all of this out before the test so you guys can see what the settings all are uh, that way you can see nothing's going to change here. But anyway, here's what we're going to do. We're going to load up Heaven Benchmark, running all the same settings as the test bench. Uh, it's got tessellation at extreme. We have got anti-aliasing at 8x, and we are going to run it at 1080p. And we're going to let it run for exactly 20 minutes. And then we're going to compare the results between open air and a closed mid-tower S340 that also has a front-mounted H100i and fans limited to 60% fan speed right there and not letting them ramp up to 100%. I'm just trying to kind of control the environment here to see uh, you know, if it's really gonna have a huge impact on performance of the card. Enough to where people would be really upset that they put it in their case and the results were so far different from a test bench. Anyway, with that said, we're gonna start the test here and I will, hey, look, my shadow. Hey, I will see you guys in, uh, in 20 minutes. We're back, it's been 20 minutes now. I'm gonna show you some numbers up here uh, and just to show you before I do that, because I know there's some tinfoil hat wearers in the audience that are going to be like, you switched it. You're not still running the S340. There it is right there. The test rig is actually down there on the, the floor, as you can see. So it is not hooked up. But here are uh, the numbers. So here's what we got so far. Let me lock the tripod here. I'm trying to do this all in one shot. I really don't want anyone to be like, you're trying to fool us. So... We are at 71C right now, and it spent most of its time bouncing between 70 and 71, hitting 72 a couple of times. Fans at 55%, that's 2% slower than it was running inside the test bench. 1835 megahertz, 1.043 volts. That's a lower voltage than it was doing on the test bench. I'm not entirely sure why, given this is a Z170, like I said. Um, so I don't know why the voltage is a little bit lower. Same exact megahertz though, and the temperatures, as you can see, is actually a couple of degrees cooler than we were seeing with uh, the open air test bench, which hit a max of 73. Um, it was sitting around 72 constantly, and this is anywhere between 70 and 71. So let's do this here real quick. Let's go ahead and end the test, and then let's look at the chart. Okay, so here's the chart going. Let's go ahead and start at the top here. GPU temperature max, again, 73. It hit that I don't know, a couple of times during the test, but if we move our mouse cursor over here, you'll see we sat most of the time at 71, dropped down to 67, 71, 69, 71, 72, 71, 68, 71, 70, 71, 71, goes all the way down to 
69 right there, <laughs> 69, ladies. So 71 all the way to, towards the end. I can't even find where it peaked that 73. Um, I think right there. No, that's 72. Anyway, so the temperature, as you can see, let's just go ahead and for the sake of argument, call this dead even with the open air test bench. If we take a look here at the core clock, as you can see, 1835 megahertz all the way across. And then if we come down here to uh, core voltage, 1.043 all the way across the chart. That did not change, so it did it with lesser voltage. I can't understand why it would take 1.050 or 1.062 as we were seeing on the open air test bench. I'm not entirely too sure what that's all about. Okay, so there's one more test I wanna do here real quick because if you recall, I did this with the case fans at 60%. Now, I've done this test already with the fans at 100%. It made no difference. The temperatures got to the same right here. So if I ramp these fans up to 100, the, the temperatures stayed exactly the same. They did not come down at all. But what if I drop these case fans down to, say, 20%? I'm curious as to what's going to happen on the GPU temperature. But I've already shown you that with the fans running at a respectable 60%, not too noisy, real world situ situation here, without you know, being short of trying to literally choke the system as I'm doing right now with the fans at 20%, I expect there to be no difference between test bench and uh, case as you just saw. All right, well, there's the graphics card test going right now with uh, the case fans at 20%. So you can see it's bouncing between 70, 71, and it's been running for 15 minutes. So I, I think it's time that we put this argument to bed a little bit. Now, there's obviously more that we need to talk about here. Uh, and we will, we'll talk about that. We're gonna, we're gonna close out here, but this is the setup. You can see it's still going. Atmospheric style card relying on the case to exhaust all the hot air, but the fans barely running. Listen, it's not making any noise, listen. I'm gonna, I'm gonna unclip my mic, watch this. There's my mic. Yeah, there's your proof the fans are going super slow. In fact, for those curious, the fans were only running at 586 RPM and 639 RPM. Yeah, the ship is barely turning, man. So there you go, guys. I've actually spent about the last four hours doing the testing in this video that you guys just saw. I did it multiple times, and then I made sure that I was having as little contamination as I could, making sure the room was cooled off before starting the next test. I made sure that I had real world scenario going here. Guys were mad when I said I turned off the AC and I closed the door because again, that could affect the results. So I've got the overhead fan going. You might see the light bouncing a little bit. And I had the air conditioner and stuff vent you know, open as I normally would. While, while gaming, I tried to make the situation as realistic as possible. The numbers are what they are. The case did not affect the temperatures whatsoever, but the one number you can't argue with, and I don't know why this is happening still, is why the open air test bench required more voltage to get the same numbers when GPU boost was controlling things than the closed case. So if anything, that makes it seem like my open air test bench results being 1C hotter and requiring more voltage, at least in the case of the MSI, the open air test bench was actually the worst case scenario. Can't figure that one out. You guys also saw that when I slowed down the S340 fans all the way to 20%, which the fans barely started at. In fact, one of the fans, I had to flick it with my finger to get it spinning because it wasn't enough startup voltage. Still saw no difference whatsoever when it came to the temperatures of the graphics card. And the number to substantiate that is the fact that the fan speed well, the fan percentage did not increase between those tests. It stayed about 57% when it came to the max fan speed at keeping the card cool. So obviously at the temps it stayed the same, but the fan speed jumped up to say 60, 65%. Uh, then that obviously could say, well, the case was introducing a situation where the fans had to go faster to stay cooler. That wasn't the case. I already showed you guys that. Or wasn't the, see, when I say it wasn't the case in a case video like this, it's always so confusing. That wasn't what happened here. The fans ran at the exact same speed gave us pretty much the exact same temperatures. Again, the open air test bench was like one to two C hotter than the closed case. So people, people saying you know, that the closed case would be the worst case scenario, um, at least in, in my testing here, wasn't the, the situation at all.
Make of that what you will. I think the numbers today have shown that yes, I think my testing is fair, I stand by it, and nothing's gonna change. The numbers speak for themselves, and obviously, as you know, as a fan of reference coolers, these are a lot less affected by a case than open air coolers like this guy are gonna be. So I don't understand why, uh, why the big ruckus. But anyway, I've done my video now. This is my official response to the community wanting to know open air test bench versus cases. And not only that, if I wanted to do case testing, there's not a single case I could choose right now that would be realistic for every single case that's out there on the market. And no matter what case I chose, and I'm sure someone watching this video was pissed off that I used an S340, but hey, we used a case, a small one, and slowed the fans down to practically nothing and got no difference whatsoever on the results. So that's it. Yes, I stand by my numbers. It's the way I do my testing and it's the way I'm gonna keep doing my testing. Share this video with someone you think it might help. Most of the time, it's not gonna make any difference, but I feel a little better for making this video because those that were willing to listen to the information hopefully learned something at the end of this video. As always, guys, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.